Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to continue on with the model uh, and we're going to move on to modeling the arms. So um, same as with the leg, we're going to start with a poly cylinder right up here. And then the attribute editor, which we can toggle on and off with this button here. We're going to go to poly cylinder. We're going to change subdivision axes to 8. And then I'm going to, there we go, simply just rotate this in place. And you can start at the uh, shoulder. In this case, I'm going to start at the wrist. And then I'm going to switch into my perspective view, tap F on my keyboard to zoom in on the object and then I'm going to delete just the end caps. And we're going to follow the same exact process going all the way through. So I'm just going to scale and uh, extrude as needed. So one of the first things um, I would like to do actually is uh, the wrist isn't like a perfect circle. The wrist is more of a uh, sort of a flattened cylinder, if you will. So I'm going to do something like that to start. And then switching to my edge mode, holding right click and going to edge mode. I'm going to double click that edge loop so I can select the entire thing. And I'm going to just start to, oh, wrong one. scale and move this as needed. Okay. And I'm just going to continue this process. You can hold uh, shift to extrude. That's one way. I'll do it that way for now. Okay, and then I can always extrude here as well. Using this button, extrude. And then tapping G is the last tool used. So in this case, it's the extrude. And then when I get to the elbow, I'm actually going I hit control X accidentally. Just wanted to make sure I didn't accidentally select anything, uh, the image in the background and accidentally shift it over. And then in the elbow, I want to make sure I have at least three edge loops in this region distinguishing where the elbow is located. And the reason for this is because uh, later on when we go to uh, deform it, animate it, um, etc., it'll have that topology that it needs in order to uh, bend easily. Try to match my reference a little bit closer. It really doesn't need to be perfect though, um, because you'll find out later that you're going to be going through, uh, more than likely, be making some type of adjustment here and there at some point. Now I do have my other videos uh, listed below in the canvas shell that you can always check. Um, but really quickly, if your character has some kind of sweatshirt or t-shirt or something like that, 
I'll go ahead and show you how I would uh, typically model that. So I would have something like this. And what I'll do, let's just say this is the start of, you know, this is where his shirt ends or something, t-shirt, right? What I would do is I would just extrude, and then I would extrude out, and then I would extrude back, and then extrude back out, and then back this way, and you create that, um, basically that sleeve of the shirt, and then I would continue this all the way up the arm like so just so you know okay. okay and extrude And this is where it sort of gets a little tricky, if you will. Um, we're going to get into uh, modeling uh, the body, and then we're going to combine the arm and the legs and all that. Um, but let's go ahead and just kind of get this started a little bit closer to where this sort of matches and, and meets this torso. Uh, the upper torso anyway. So I'm going to include um, the lat in here, uh, our shoulder, and you know, just sort of fill in the blanks as I go until I actually finally do um, include the rest of the model. And I'm just going for shape. And every time I extrude, I hit W to move or R to scale. Um, I personally just don't like the generic options they give you. And we'll go like something like so. And then I want to make sure that. And I could even possibly give that a little bit of rotation. That when I get into the arm here, I actually have it, you'll see that I have it like way, way too big. So what I'll do, it just seems enormous in comparison to his side view. What I'll do is I'm going to grab it uh, from the edge. I'm going to tap B on my keyboard. And I'm going to hold B. So tapping B toggles on soft select mode. OK. So then over here in the top right corner, there's this little hammer tool. It's your tool settings. So toggling on and off. And it actually, ah, oh, here it is, the soft selection. It's a drop down here. And what you can do, you can play around with some of these settings and so on and so forth. But typically what I'll do is I'll hold B and holding left click simultaneously, simultaneously and dragging left or right across the screen. You'll notice that it increases and decreases the size of that brush or soft select or also known as the fall off radius. Other than that, I keep all of these the same. I never really change any of those settings. Um, this is a pretty good one by default. And now that I sort of have this soft select, um, you'll see the range is from yellow to red to black. Um, I'll have, because I selected it on this far edge, you'll notice that it's selected the, uh, this has the brightest yellow as it moves uh, slowly to red and, uh, you know, red, orange, and black, right? So what I'm going to do from here is using my scale tool, I'm going to start to basically just scale this into place and I'd say that's a pretty good start for it um, and you'll notice I did that really really quickly really really easily um, and if I really want to on top of that 
uh, I could start to define some of these other parts. If you look at your um, arm, you know, in this region, and you could do this by edges too. I'll select one vert and shift select the next one um, without extruding. And I'm just going to go ahead and sort of maybe hold B, adjust my fall off radius, and just sort of play around with some of the shape on it. And like, it, especially in the elbow, I know this, this section is going to be much more in. And then maybe even right here where the elbow bone is, if you will. And maybe even turn off soft select for a second. And you can kind of play around and get a little bit different uh, look and feel to it. And like in here where it comes back into the body, perhaps it comes in just a smidge to accentuate that bicep a little bit more. But I don't want them to be too strong. Um, but you kind of get the idea. I believe these are his triceps here. And something like that. That's good enough um, to get started with. And there we have the arm. So now the next thing is, is that now that I have this done, I'm just going to do an edit to clear out my inputs. I'm going to do an edit, delete all by type, and do history. And then I'm also, just to give it a little bit more of a softer look, I'm going to select it, hold shift, hold right click, and go soften, harden edge, soften edge. And now when I turn off my wireframe unshaded, you'll see it has a much softer look. If I have it as I would before, it would look something like this really polygonal um, it doesn't display any real smoothness at all so I'm just gonna go ahead hold shift hold right click go to soften edge soften edge and now that we have the one arm done now we can go ahead and easily uh, flip it to the other side so in order to do that the first thing I like to do is I'm gonna do modify freeze transformations that's going to clear out all the information in here, zero it all out. And then also set the scale to X, Y, and Z equal to one. And then what I like to do is use my, press W for my move tool, hold D. This allows me to adjust the pivot. And then what I like to do is I hold X. And before I even do that, let's go display grid. And let's zoom in a little bit holding D and holding X and you'll notice up here um, move settings it's gonna toggle to edit pivot with my move tool selected edit pivot and then also that's just holding D and then holding X you'll notice up here the snap to grid button will come up and we're gonna just snap it you'll see it snaps to every grid point we're gonna snap it to directly in the center here and now that I've got that done what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold control and press D or edit and duplicate control D control D and we're gonna scale it at negative one on X and now we've created the arms so now we've got the arms and the legs to our character started I'll go ahead and turn the grid off now and we're off to a pretty good start on our mesh so we're gonna continue um, working on this don't forget to save um, as long as you set your project as I showed you in previous videos control alt s will increment and save continue and you'll notice it'll automatically renumber down here so um, that's all there is to uh, modeling the arm uh, we covered the soft select tool which is a really useful tool um, soften harden edges um, extrude again we're we'll gonna be doing lots of extruding, um, snapping to the grid, um, editing the pivot point, um, and any. I'm sh that's all I can think of off the top of my head. But we've covered a lot so far. So um, if you do have any questions, be sure to shoot me a message. Let me know. Um, and 
yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, stay tuned for the next one.